Ben Affleck gets a lot of flack for his performances in films. Armageddon, Reindeer Games, Daredevil, God Forbid I Speak the Name, Geely, and now Batman. But I bet you've forgotten about some of the roles where Ben Affleck has shined on the screen. Let's check out a few, shall we? Before we dive in, hear me out. Affleck is underappreciated. You can't deny that he's become an award-winning filmmaker with movies like Argo, but it's his performances over the past three decades that should remind critics and audiences that Ben Affleck is undoubtedly a great actor. His ability to portray forlorn and damaged characters seeking redemption is why he was perfect for Bruce Wayne, and I personally blame the producers and directors for the films that left fans disappointed. Save Martha. Like most actors, Affleck has acted in stinkers, but there has always been great work, and it's about time we reconsider Affleck's acting ability and recognize these 10 Ben Affleck roles you totally forgot about. Let's start off with Ben Affleck's role in the 2006 intense action comedy Smoke and Aces, about a Las Vegas performer turned snitch named Buddy Israel, played by Jeremy Piven, who decides to turn state's evidence and testify against the mob. When a huge price is put on Buddy's head, all sorts of criminals and bounty hunters go after him. Now Affleck plays the character of Jack Dupree, a bail bondsman who is hired to bring Buddy back from Lake Tahoe and see that he makes his next court appearance. Affleck clearly has fun with the role, and his team gets a cool Tarantino-like introduction. Though his time in the movie is cut short when he and his gang are murdered by the Tremor brothers, we do get a memorable scene from the film as Chris Pine makes the dead Affleck talk. I'll forgive you, darling. I appreciate that, man. And as you see, even a dead Affleck is a good Affleck. In 2000, first-time writer-director Ben Younger gave us the film Boiler Room a quintessential story of greed and redemption set in the 90s about a stock trader featuring a pre-Fast and the Furious Vin Diesel and Giovanni Ribisi. We follow Ribisi's rise from an entry-level broker to a multi-million dollar producing stockbroker before the eventual demise of the film. Now Ben Affleck plays an essential character in this film, Jim Young, the head recruiter at fictitious stock brokerage firm J.T. Marlin. Affleck plays a take-no-prisoners character that exudes confidence and shows us what it's like to hustle. Affleck's big moment comes when he delivers probably one of the most powerful speeches to a group of unsuspecting brokers in cinema history. They say money can't buy happiness. Look at the f***ing smile on my face. Ear to ear, baby. And it was his role that Affleck was nominated for the 2000 Teen Choice Award for Choice Sleazebag, but uh, apparently lost to Mike Myers in Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. Get in my belly! Sorry, Ben, it looks like you should have gained a few pounds and tried to eat a few babies if you wanted to take home that Teen Choice Award. Now, Mike Judge has given us Beavis and Butthead, the cult classic Office Space, and the movie that was not supposed to be a documentary, Idiocracy. In 2009, he gave us the film Extract, about Joel, played by Jason Bateman, who suffers in an unhappy marriage with Susie, played by Kristen Wiig. He shares his frustration with a stoner bartender named Dean, played by, you guessed it, Ben Affleck who advises him to cheat, but Joel won't do it. So Affleck's character tells him to hire a gigolo to seduce her. While the film wasn't on par with other Mike Judge's films, Extract gave us a mellowed out version of Affleck that we rarely saw on screen. Affleck is chill, bro, totally chill. Now speaking of bartender roles, I bet you didn't remember Ben Affleck played the bartender in 200 Cigarettes. Of course, there might be a few of you that say, what the heck is 200 Cigarettes? And if that's you, I don't care. I'm talking about it. It was a movie. It came out in 1999, singling the last greatest year of movies. So take it or leave it. Now 200 Cigarettes is set during one long evening on New Year's Eve 1981. It follows a dozen 20-something people going to a party while dealing with their life's problems. And the ensemble cast of characters were made up of actors in the midst of their newfound fame, especially Affleck, as he had just starred in the huge blockbuster Armageddon a year earlier. At the time, Affleck was the big name in the film, and he even brought his girlfriend at the time with him, who was Gwyneth Paltrow. Now speaking of the goop herself, let's go back to the 17th century for Shakespeare in Love, starring Gwyneth Paltrow as Viola, and Joseph Fiennes as William Shakespeare. Shakespeare in Love is a wonderful and beautifully crafted film, and believe me, nobody expected the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I mean, nobody expected Ben Affleck to show up in Shakespeare, but when he does, he shines as the star he is. Affleck plays Ned Allen, one of a troupe of touring actors who arrive back to the Rose Theater to fill the parts of the first production of Shakespeare's new play. Striding in with a pack of good-looking, talented actors, Affleck saunters in with more charisma and chiseled jaw charm than you could shake a spear at. 
Affleck brings the biggest cameo of the film just bursting out of the screen. Affleck was the perfect choice for the role of Ned Allen and does a fantastic job playing against Shakespeare and was nominated as Funniest Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture at the American Comedy Awards. Now before Affleck played the fool, let's not forget the serious hazing he gave to all the new guys at school. Yes, that's right, O'Bannon. The guy you hated and dazed and confused was played by none other than Ben himself. Look, everyone's so caught up in Matthew McConaughey and his iconic All right, all right, all right. that you totally forgot about Ben who was giving padlins. That's a padlin. The cocky bad boy who divvied out licks to the oncoming freshman enjoyed his beatings a little too much. While other characters were hitting on chicks, getting stoned, or finding love in this American graffiti-esque 70s film, O'Bannon is aggressive, cruel, sexist, and homophobic. In a 2010 interview with Backstage, Affleck said of his character, I was the least appealing character in that movie. I was the jerk who got his comeuppance. And his performance as a strong bad boy bleeds over into our next film. Ben Affleck entered the View Askew universe in Mallrats. Affleck plays Shannon Hamilton. You know. Jerk from fashionable mail, this upscale wannabe shop on the second floor. And likes to pick up girls on the rebound from disappointing relationships. You know, because they're much more in need of solace and they're fairly open to suggestions. And he uses that to take girls to a place they dread. I like the back of a Volkswagen. Some of you may not have been a mall rat in the 90s, but if you were, you had to deal with this guy at some point or another. And Mallrats came out a year before his breakout performance in Goodwill Hunting. And if you're a huge fan of Mallrats and Kevin Smith, you know we're all waiting for Mallrats 2. Since Mallrats, Affleck and Smith famously had a big falling out. Though in recent years, they've rekindled their relationship. Now it appears that Ben will be returning. But when we last left Shannon in Mallrats, he was behind bars, getting taken to a place where, you know, girls dread. What, like the back of a Volkswagen? In an interview with THR, Smith was asked about Affleck's return and said, The thing that I'm most tickled about is how Shannon Hamilton and his crime from back in the day figures into the current climate. Shannon comes back as Senator Shannon Hamilton. So get ready, fans. Affleck is coming back to a place where we all dread. What? Like the back of a Volkswagen? Now before American Idol gave us pop stars, Project Runway gave us fashionistas, and America's top models turned models into human guinea pig experiments, there was Project Greenlight with Matt Damon and you guessed it, Ben Affleck. Like THE Ben Affleck. Hey, it's still a role, I mean he's playing Ben Affleck, and I bet you totally forgot about Project Greenlight, and now you're going, oh man, what happened to that show? Well, if you were a filmmaker in the early 2000s, you thought Project Greenlight was going to be your way to break into the industry. I mean, that's what Damon and Affleck kept telling us. Project Greenlight was a documentary series with an internet contest in which amateur screenwriters or directors could win the opportunity to make their movie for theatrical release. Cameras follow all of the participants during the shoot, revealing some of the tension and triumphs that make up the daily life on a film set. And because of Goodwill Hunting's success, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon helped guide the contestants through the grueling process, and only one filmmaker would be left standing and given one million dollars to produce his or her film. Project Greenlight may have been a failure, but it did launch the film career of Shia LaBeouf when he starred in Battle of Shaker Heights, which was one of the Project Greenlight films. So you could thank Ben Affleck for the Just Do It meme. DO IT! JUST DO IT! John Krasinski may be playing Jack Ryan for Amazon Prime, but go back a bit. No, that's, uh, that's Chris Pine playing Jack Ryan. No, that's too far, that's Alec Baldwin playing Jack Ryan in The Hunt for Red October. No, no, that's, that's Harrison Ford. Okay, gee, look, fine. Alright, it's the sum of all fears with Ben Affleck taking up the titular role of Jack Ryan. Now, if you didn't remember that he played Jack Ryan, well, now you do. The Sum of All Fears received generally mixed reviews, but it was considered a major financial success. And Ben Affleck was only 29 when he played Jack Ryan, and many criticized the casting of Affleck as he was so young compared to Baldwin and Ford. But frankly, Jack Ryan is kind of just like James Bond, and he can be restarted as many times as you want. And according to many reviewers, in a ranking from worst to best, Affleck ranks higher than Chris Pine. So take that, Chris Pine. You may have killed him in Smoking Aces, but he's one-upped you in the Jack Ryan department. Okay, I've saved the best film for last, and you want to know why? Because... Affleck, you the bomb in Phantom, yo! You're absolutely right, Jay. Affleck was indeed the bomb in Phantoms, yo. You may be asking yourself, All right, what the hell's going on here? Why should we be concerned with Phantoms? Well, Phantoms is the movie where Ben Affleck proves himself as a leading man, and yes, it was before Armageddon. Ben Affleck had been in many films before, but never as the lead. And if you want to see some real acting on screen, we get to see Affleck act against a dog. A phantom-filled dog, and Affleck being scared and nothing else. And yet, 
It's because of Ben Affleck's performance, it totally works. You believe it, 100%. But Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. Word, Phantoms like a moth. <laughs> Up now. So, look, can we start giving Ben Affleck a chance again? His performance of Bruce Wayne is fine. I believe he's given us a solid performance. I think the mistakes lie in the writers and directors involved in this DCEU mess. Ben Affleck's solo Batman movie may never be made, but we learn that Arkham Asylum and the darker side of Batman may have been the plot, pulled from the Nightfall story from the comics. Affleck was going to give us a soul-crushing Batman film, but thanks to the misfire of DCEU, we just got another sad Affleck. Now stop giving us sad Affleck and start giving us awesome Affleck. Do it! And who can't wait to see Ridley Scott's The Last Duel, starring Ben Affleck as King Charles VI and also starring Matt Damon and Adam Driver. Hopefully that won't be a Ben Affleck role you'll forget. Good day, gentlemen. And until that day comes, keep your head to the grindstone.